Zara. I'm 10 year old and I have dyspraxia. In your own words, how would you describe to people who don't know what dyspraxia is? I probably call it the the condition of probably the con the, the condition where you're clumsy and your motor skills aren't really the best. Like some pe some people, their handwriting could be stellar, but dyspraxics normally their handwriting's probably the worst. Um, and I probably call me I probably call dyspraxia the condition that's normally brushed under the rug and stuck it in the cop closet because um, like it isn't isn't recognised that much and it affects your hand like coordination skills and also some mental skills so it also affects the inside as it affects the outside. So knowing what dyspraxia is, what made you think that's all I had this? Um, it was a mixture of things, just um, when she was really really little, obviously the, the clumsiness, the constant falling over and hurting herself, um, being covered in bruises from it, but I think it was more when she um, was learning to ride a bike and um, doing things that all children kind of learn quite naturally, like right? about going on a scooter, roller skates, she just couldn't, no matter what we did, um, we just couldn't get at her to get that balance, so that kind of was the first trigger. Um, and then obviously as she pros progressed into um, primary school, it was lots of little different things that um, were kind of picking up, um, let me say, the, the motor skills, noticed that she wasn't using um, knife and fork to eat her meals, she was using her fingers, no matter how many times we would tell her off to, to pick up a knife and fork and use a knife and fork. So it was kind of loads of just little things with regards to our um, coordination. Was it difficult to be diagnosed as a young child with uh, dyspraxia? I'd probably call it, yeah, because as uh, as um, the dyspraxics are known, it's more boys that get recognised more than girls as because boys supposedly play more athletic sports and uh, like football so that makes them be easy to recognise because you could tell a child out if they're not kicking the ball right they're tripping over tons. But as girls, we, are spo we don't supposedly play as many sports so we so we don't get recognised that easily so um, it, it's, it, 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 it makes it quite difficult and I guess as a child it's just dyspraxia it's quite hard to see, like unlike autism, you guys, you, like autism, you could tell a person from birth they're autistic, but if you're dyspraxic, you can't, you, you can't tell, can you? Because you have to look deeper inside, and most people they just look at a glance and say they're fine, but most of the time it could be just be something different. And mm. um, yeah, I think. I think it's hard, I think for a number of the reasons that Zara said as well, I think um, typically um, boys have been picked up quicker for that reason, that boys seem to do a lot more um, motor coordination skills that identify that there's obviously a problem um, where girls allegedly don't, but I think also girls are quite good at masking their problems, um, so where um, things that Zara struggled with. Sarah was very, very good at finding other ways around it and, and kind of masking the initial problem. So that's why, um, you know, despite me kind of questioning, a lot of the time I was kind of met with, oh, it's just, it's just Zara, it's just Zara, it's just the way Zara is. Um, so yeah, I would definitely say it's hard to, 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 to pick up a diagnosis. And so once you got told that, it's just because of your job, isn't it, yeah. you're a teacher? Yeah, yeah. Some, sometimes people feel that you're looking for something that's not there, yeah. Mm -hmm. difficult to swim or does it help with your condition? Um, I'd say it helps with my condition because um, if it wasn't for swimming my mum might have not been able to find out about my um, about like be able to get the proof about my condition so she could show it to the doctors and they could try and recognise it because if they weren't able to the one might not even work and I guess really the only stroke I find my difficulty with is probably broke butterfly because with the hand if I haven't used different strokes it's quite hard like the hands like this and the legs like this well back crawl it's just like this front crawl's just flipped and butterfly it's just I mean breaststroke mm -hmm. um yeah I probably call it I probably say it helps but there is some strokes that definitely I could definitely improve on and probably isn't the good as mm -hmm. that 
Did the support and understanding come with the diagnosis, for example, school? Yeah, absolutely, definitely. Um, prior to Zara's diagnosis, um, with regards to, to school, there wasn't anything, there was no support there because they, they didn't understand. But then obviously once we got the diagnosis, um, and obviously the, the school educational psychologist was involved, um, Zara's educational healthcare plan was then put into place um, to make sure that she had extra time for like processing information and what have you, and obviously heading into our SATs to make sure that she had all the kind of resources and the time in place for that. Um, and then on the back of that um, came obviously all the other diagnoses as well because obviously once she was diagnosed with dyspraxia that's when they then picked up on all the other things i.e. Uh, anxiety and Asperger's and our ADHD and hypermobility so kind of everything then came came with one um, and as a result of that yeah everything's been put into place for her now to, to, to kind of help her out um, and ultimately we were put in touch with it um, a fantastic organisation and um, the only organisation for dyspraxia um, Dyspraxia Foundation who they've been absolutely amazing they've given her loads of like resources and advice and help as well. Did you find it easy to find information and help about dyspraxia? Um, once Sarah had got a diagnosis, definitely um, prior to her diagnosis, not so easy. Um, there was little bits of information when I was doing some kind of research of my own um, but some of it kind of um, contradicted um, obviously what I, I thought was, was dyspraxia um, but then once once she got a diagnosis and I was put in, in touch with the, the correct people um, yeah the, the, the information came to us quite readily from the dyspraxia foundation but what I would say is it's it came to us because I was referred to the Dyspraxia Foundation. Had I not, I don't think the information is out there. Um, I think Zara's touched on it herself. Um, dyspraxia is kind of the hidden condition. So there isn't a lot of information out there because people don't know a great deal about it. Um, so yes, in the sense, if you're, if you're referred to the right people who can provide you with that information, but no, if, if, if you're not referred, because there isn't, isn't really anything out there. Has dyspraxia affected your school life? Definitely. I'd say um, when I was in reception up to when probably when I was diagnosed in year five, well probably year three, when a little bit of light on my condition was being shined, I'd call myself an outcast. Like I wouldn't have that. Most people wouldn't even bother like with me. I'd sometimes feel like I was a ghost and I've got my handwriting and my and definitely truly it definitely listening to the teacher like I will just daydream I would zone out immediately it, it's it would be hard sometimes because obviously with many kids don't understand them who who has what even to this day still some people are mean and and I wouldn't mention names but there is some people who are, who are mean spirit and just don't understand fully how can people help you I guess by understanding my condition and probably just listening, like knowing that some some things might aggravate me and actually kind of helping instead of harming, like instead of being instead of being mean and like saying I don't it doesn't matter, it doesn't, it doesn't understand, like actually researching and maybe learn like what a dyspraxic has and what's different and maybe even just actually maybe even just questioning or asking like is this okay is this different instead of just doing it I think okay. <laughs> for me I think um, the biggest thing is it's is kind of what Zora said I think it's just um, you know speak, speak to the individual ask them what works for them what doesn't work for them and um, definitely the, the the research needs to be out there and I can only speak obviously um, from from Zara's experience but I think within the schools I think there needs to be a bit more education about dyspraxia and um, certainly Zara's school and um, Zara's the only child who has received a diagnosis of dyspraxia and all the time that that school's been around and um, now I don't for one minute believe that there hasn't been other children through the school or currently in the school who haven't got some form of dyspraxia so clearly um, teachers need need a little bit more training and education the same way that they have with regards to like spotting autism and all the other um, conditions that are out there um, and I think for me I just um, would like to think that 
every child, irrelevant of whether they've got a condition or treat as an individual at school. Um, and so therefore, whatever needs they need to help them achieve what the, the you know, that the potential is, that those those things are put into place. And I think that's even more so when you've, you've got a condition like dyspraxia.